Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from Igloo Ghost, titled Memory Exo. You know, I wonder if I'd gotten off on the wrong foot with Igloo Ghost. This is my fourth time covering this experimental, wonky bass music artist. Uh, you can find links to my previous videos on the guy in the description. When this guy broke out in the mid-late 2010s putting out projects like his debut album Neo Wax Bloom in 2017, and various other related EPs such as Chinese New Year, Clear Tame, or Steel Mogu, the electronic music community had all but started to hail this guy as the possible future of the genre. He'd come out the gate delivering sound design that was so mind-blowingly dense and focusing on this bizarre cartoonish aesthetic that seemed completely unlike anything else out at the time. Though for how inventive as a sound seemed to be back then, I don't know if the level of hype surrounding him was all that helpful in the grander scheme of things. As the years went by, I'd started to come across more and more artists that could deliver a comparable style, be it Rusty, Sophie, Hudson Mohawk, False Noise, early Sam Gelletry, more recently of course Vale Smith. And the novelty of what Igloo Ghost brought to the table felt less and less special in retrospect. Like he was just emblematic of the sound of this one specific scene, rather than being some kind of new frontier for electronic music. Not to take away from that debut, it was actually better than I remembered coming back to it for this video, and the sheer balls to the wall density of his sound and his oddball presentation was still something that could set him apart from the scene he came up in. It was an impressive listen to be sure. But not only did the novelty of it only go so far and end up with the kind of listen I never felt the urge to come back to much, that project also saw Igloo Ghost being hyped up to be a much bigger deal and much more forward thinking than I think he really was at his core. Which meant that any new release he'd come out with, we'd started to look to him to continue to be more actively inventive and deliver new sounds we never heard before, only to be mildly disappointed when he just kept putting out material that sounded the same as other stuff he'd already done. Like, early 2010's one of tricks point never this guy ain't, probably for the best we don't treat him that way. Ironically, it wasn't until he decided to actively strip his sound down and go for a comparatively quieter and more low-key mix for his second album Leyline Eon in 2021, which seemed to be a comparative letdown for many fans, that his music actually started to click with me on a more visceral level. The sound design wasn't any less impressive, in fact he was bringing in more like live instrumentation like strings and stuff which started to give a warmth to his sound that wasn't quite there in the same way previously, but more importantly now it felt like his sound design was coming secondary to delivering an actual stronger emotional core instead of just going out of its way to impress you and sound cool above all else. And that made it much easier for me to come back to, resulting in that album even notching an honorable mention for my year end list that year. That album's only grown on me in the time since it came out, I might even call it properly great at this point, and I think it's the best work he's done so far. Now as for this third album of his, I'm not gonna say I really knew what to expect, but it seems he's started to move in even more of a comparatively straightforward direction than before. As most people seem to have already observed, uh, the tone of this album is pretty well communicated by the album cover. None of the bright and colorful imagery that his previous work was often packaged in, just a, just a photo of him with like a table of DJ equipment on the beach, and all the colors are washed out in shades of white and brown. The image itself is still pretty crazy looking. I thought for a second he was just doing his set in the middle of the ocean until I noticed the table has legs and is being raised up out of the way of the water. Still seems pretty dangerous. But that perfectly translates to what the music itself is like as well. This album is no longer just about hitting you with lots of strange details or crazy synth flourishes or off-the-wall sound design, which is all still there, but a lot of these tracks follow more standard UK garage and experimental hip-hop arrangements, and they're a lot more blunt and to the point, hitting you with a lot more watches of bass, bursts of noise, and the guy's own barely comprehensible rapping, rather than the goofy chipmunk snippets of his debut, or the lesser melodic arrangement seen on Leyline Eon. Again, this obviously is not to say it isn't still very easily recognizable as the same guy who made those other projects. All of this is just what it's like in comparison to what he's already done before, and the actual sonic ingredients going into all these mixes are pretty familiar to any number of other tracks he's put out over the years. The difference comes primarily just like in the overarching tone and the way these usual ingredients are being presented. And as for how much I actually enjoy it, I mean, it's certainly a good time. 
and it's already going over really well with his core fans and being well reviewed as the latest crazy inventive new development to in his sound, allowing him to just go ahead and make full on bangers which are a lot more visceral than anything that showed up on his last album. Though I've also been sitting with this for like two weeks and have been struggling with it. Like I'd seriously thought about just leaving this into some stuff I miss segment for a while until Fantano put out his review and I decided and eh, I can just do the same as well. To make it absolutely clear, this is a good project with plenty of standouts, and it's even grown on me the longer I've sat with it, but I think I like it less than his other two albums. And my main issue with it is very simple, this whole thing totally runs together. Most of these tracks sound fundamentally the same to me, especially in the second half of this thing. The sound being explored is really nice, and I don't get sick of it, but it feels like there's a strict limit on how deep I can go with it. The album does get off to a really strong start. Uh, the intro cut Blue Hum has this very plastic and metallic kind of house arrangement with echoing vocal chops, the artist's own processed whispering voice, and even a few flute riffs near the end. Definitely the kind of opener that pulls me in effectively with its somewhat peaceful but mysterious atmosphere and still ends up feeling like a particular standout in terms of the sound of this whole project. And then the tone of the rest of this thing is set a lot more by following track New Species, which basically carries right from where the intro left off, except with like double the energy level. Way more layers of blistering, squelching noises shooting through this mix, and Igloo Ghost providing a slightly more tuneful, deep-voiced vocal performance with lots of bright 90s rave stabs and frantic percussion. It's the kind of thing that sounds like lots of other Igloo Ghost productions I've heard over the years, but it still sufficiently hits hard enough for me to mark as a highlight as well. Most of the other tracks here kind of provide different spins on a similar mix of sounds as shown here, though at least at first there's some decent variety in terms of the amount of different ways these elements are being reassembled. Alloy Flea kind of reassembles these elements into more of a trap-ish mix with some, like, halftime dubstep flavor thrown in, as well as this one part at the end that just has a lot of rollicking techno percussion. <laughs> Choral Mimic has some more standard danceable house-adjacent arrangements with more fuzzed-out noise washing around it and it gets more melodic the longer it goes on. Spawn 01 brings in guest female vocals from Sist for some kinda cutesy down-tempo trip-hop influenced mix. The easy strongest tunes out of any track here. And then Flex Cocoon goes more into, like, experimental hip-hop territory with Igloo Ghost and guest vocalist and co-producer Ali XL trading loose raps over metallic UK garage beats and a few epic blocky pads. This whole run of the first six tracks keeps me pretty consistently invested every time I've put this thing on, but also every time I've put this thing on I start to find my attention trailing off and the album starting to get a lot spottier and more meandering immediately after this point. There's several different tracks in the second half that just read to me as indistinct filler in context. Tracks like Pulse Angel, Nematode, and Do Signal, or Do Drop Signal, depending on what streaming service you use. These cuts are all fun in a vacuum. Uh, Nematode has some of the more intense blocks of noise running through it, and Do Signal has some nice peaceful melodic flourishes around the edges. But the mixes they deliver just kind of sound the same as any number of other cuts here without standing out to me. And there's definitely a part of me who feels like it wouldn't have hurt for a few of these cuts to have been edited out. Also, the Chlorine FM interlude bringing in a few indecipherable spoken vocal snippets and clanking barely melodic percussive stabs over some fuzzy ambience doesn't really add anything special of substance either. This is hardly a long album, only about 43 minutes total, but right near the end it does start to feel like it's running on longer than it really is, and that does not strike me as a good sign. Although, to be fair, the, this is not, like, as steep a drop-off as I might be making it out to be. Like, the second half does still have some further standouts, and they're sequenced in just the right spots for the album to not feel like it's outright falling off or becoming tedious. I do really like Echo Lace. The repetitive rapped vocals on that one form among the catchiest hooks on display throughout this album, and the hyper-fuzzed-out dance beats underscoring everything are really propulsive as well. Germ Chrism may not be one of the more distinct-sounding cuts, kind of delivers a similar idea to an earlier track like New Species, but it goes about the similar idea with among the most frantic and high-energy mixes on display here, one of the most visceral bangers in the track listing here, and I also really like that whole ambient techno-y outro tech on at the end. End. And the album does finish on a pretty strong note with Geosprite XO that goes for a uniquely glitchy mix of chopped up vocal fragments and rapid speed percussion stabs that 
kind of vaguely remind me of like that Evian Christ project from last year. It's nice to get one last track here that doesn't sound like any of the others here and it makes for a pretty satisfying way for the album to go out. But yeah, that's everything Title Memory XO has to offer. Left with pretty conflicted feelings on this one. The overall sound on this album is very cool, it delivers lots of viscerally banging mixes even in the least interesting moments, and even if it feels less out of the box than his last two projects, it's still a unique enough sound that he can call his own, and of course I'm perfectly happy with Igloo Ghost just delivering whatever music he feels without trying to be, like, as big and ambitious. Aiming comparatively lower like this is, I think, healthier in the long run. On the other hand, I I can't really look past the structural issues of this thing, and I have to admit that his other two albums did a better job of keeping me invested from start to finish. Even Neo X Bloom, in spite of all the chipmunk samples getting on my nerves more than anything else here, that album felt like it had better variety from track to track and felt like it was giving me more to latch on to than this one did. I kinda doubt this is gonna end up like a long-term keeper for me in the rest of the year, but I also expect this will end up being a big favorite for lots of other people who follow my channel and most people coming across this video probably got into it more than I did. So, yeah, I mean, in spite of my own personal hang-ups, I think I can still give it my recommendation and say I got just enough out of the listening experience for this to get away with a very light 7.3 out of 10. It's good, but could be better. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.